Hello everyone. Today is interesting topic for presentations. Androgen insensitivity syndrome. Let's understand the details of this syndrome. So what is this androgen insensitivity syndrome? See androgen it is a andro refers to male. Okay, these are male sexual hormones. Examples for such is testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Because of these male sex hormones which are coming from the testes, there will be secondary sexual characteristic in male that is deepening of the voice at puberty, development of facial hairs that is beard and moustache, muscularity of the body, deepening of the voice and coarseness of the body. So all this is because of the hormones, male reproductive hormones which are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone which acts via the corresponding receptor that is testosterone receptors. So whatever I told until now is normal. If a person produces androgen but it is insensitive to the body because the receptors are not there or they are not functional. That syndrome is called as androgen insensitivity syndrome. So before going into this syndrome detail, just want to tell you the difference between male and female. The karyotype, each and every cell of a male contains 46 chromosome. Okay, the last pair is sex chromosome that is X and Y. Whereas in female, each and every cell karyotype, each and every cell contains 46 chromosomes. The last pair of chromosomes are XX. The presence of Y makes the individual male. The absence of Y makes the individual female. That is about the karyotype or the genetic makeup of the individual. So what happens at the time of puberty, there is a growth of body hair including the upper arm, abdominal region, chest area and the pubic area. Also growth of facial hair, beard and moustache. Enlargement of larynx happens and that is Adam's apple and therefore deepening of the voice, hoarse voice will come. Okay. Then increased stature will happen. Therefore, the ultimate height attained by the male is slightly higher than the, that of the females. Heavier skull and bone structure and muscularity of the body. All these are secondary sexual characteristics of male. Whereas in female, there is no testosterone or dihydrotestosterone. Instead, there will be hormones called as estrogen and progesterone. Because of these hormones coming from the ovary, there will be enlargement of the breast and the nipple, growth of body hair, especially in the axilla or the armpit and the pubic, hair, pubic area only, that is the groin region only, not elsewhere in the body like this. Okay. Then there is a widening of the hip, so that the waist and the hip ratio will be much wider than that of the males. Elbows, the angles of the elbow is also hyperextended elbow is 5 to 8 degree, that is called the carrying angle, is also wider when compared to male. Because of this, because of the wider pelvis, the angle in the elbow should also be wider so that the woman can carry any, anything which she wants to carry in her hand without touching her hips because the hips are already wider. And deposition of the fat in the thigh, in the buttock area and uh, smoothness of the body that is also a secondary sexual characteristics. In a simpler breakdown, the voice breaks for male at puberty, hair starts growing at chest phase under the arm that is axilla and pubic hair, here only under the arm and pubic hair. In the chest area, there is a development of breast and nipple, enlarges, the body becomes more muscular, here the body becomes more uh, soft tissue will deposit and the hip will become more wider. The penis, penis enlarges over here, over here the internal genital uterus and vagina becomes larger in size. Testis starts producing the hormones, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone and the sperm. Spermatogenesis starts only at the time of puberty, whereas ovary starts producing the egg and therefore onset of menstrual cycle or menstruation. So that is in brief about the difference between male and female, karyotype and physical characteristics or phenotype. Now coming back to androgen insensitivity syndrome, it is a syndrome in which the individual who is genetically male, genetically male means each and every cell contains 46 chromosome out of which the last pair will be X and Y. But they are resistant to male hormones, that is androgens. They are resistant, they have the hormone, they have the karyotype, but it's not acting, those hormones are not acting on the cells. So secondary sexual characteristics will be that of a, instead of being like a male, the physical characteristic will be that of a woman. But the genetic makeup of this individual is that of a man. So that is a basic idea about 
androgen insensitivity syndrome they appear like the most beautiful women in the world okay but the genetic makeup is that of a man because none of the hormone uh, normal women okay they will have a uh, uh, minimal amount of androgen and estrogen which is working and that can cause certain acne hirsutism like that symptoms here none of the male hormone is able to work so entirely the female hormones will work so they will appear like a most beautiful woman okay that is a clue welcome to logic medico where understanding the concepts in medicine if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos androgen insensitivity syndrome is also called as testicular feminization this is the other name for that so coming back to the topic they have the testis but they appear like a female their body characteristics are female so the other name for androgen insensitivity syndrome is testicular feminization means testis will be there in the abdomen okay inside the abdominal cavity but they appear like a female so what is this basically it's a genetic defect affecting the x chromosome these defects make up the body unable to respond to the hormones which hormones male hormones so instead of appearing physically like a male the, the physical characteristic will now be that of a female there are two categories of this syndrome androgen insensitivity syndrome complete androgen insensitivity syndrome wherein none of the hormone male hormones are able to work throughout the body so there is no facial hair there is no beard and mustache nothing okay there is no axillary and pubic hair also won't be there testis will be completely uh, undescended testis will be there the female external genitalia vagina will be there okay that is called as complete androgen insensitivity syndrome whereas partial androgen insensitivity syndrome is a condition in which some amount of male hormone is still able to work and the external genitalia appears that of a intersex okay that is neither a male nor a female androgen insensitivity syndrome symptoms people with partial androgen insensitivity may, may have both male and female characteristics this is what just now i told you they appear like a intersex their physical characteristics appear that of a hermaphroditism they have they have a vagina which is very small and short and uh, partial closing will be there and they have a clitoris which is enlarged and appears like a uh penis and they have a very short vagina whereas a person with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome appears completely like a female but they have only the vagina there is no uterus ovary or anything they have very little hair throughout their body yes, even in the armpit and in the pubic hair will be very minimal because the testosterone and dihydrotestosterone which is the androgens will not able to work because the receptor is resistant so at puberty the female sexual characteristic appear in these individuals such as the breast and the nipple starts growing these persons do not menstruate okay because there is no uterus right when there is no uterus there is no menstrual cycle but they appear like a female the vagina is completely present but there is no cervix nor the uterus so therefore there is no menstruation or periods or menstrual cycle is not there inguinal hernia may be present uh, this hernia contains testis in it it may be present in the groin area <coughs> the breast is well developed and is present in the chest area uh, with along with the well developed nipple testis is usually present within the abdominal cavity or in the inguinal area just now i told you or atypical places within the body so what are the tests to determine androgen insensitivity syndrome so blood check up with all this testosterone hormonal assays we call it as hormonal assays a s s a y s testosterone level will be abnormally high okay this individual physically they appear like a female okay when they come the testosterone level will be drastically high lh and fsh that is follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone these values will be also be helping in diagnosis karyotype if you do then the physically they are appearing like female the karyotype resembles male the 46, xy so the genetic makeup of the individual is that of a male that time only we will be able to diagnose them as androgen insensitivity syndrome pelvic ultrasonography ultrasonography of the abdomen or the pelvis area is important to diagnose the hidden testis this female external genitalia also appears that of a female external genitalia of this individual 
physically also they appear like female but actually inside their pelvis there is testis so which is called undescended testis and there is presence of vagina also and absence of uterus and the fallopian tube can also be noted or confirmed by pelvic ultrasonography there is no uterus there is no fallopian tube but there is a presence of vagina other test also helps in distinguishing androgen insensitivity syndrome from androgen deficiency there will be some condition in which the testis is present normally but androgens is not produced what if you do blood test androgens level in this case will be drastically high but it is not working because of the resistance of the receptor whereas in androgen deficiency as the name suggests the androgens level will be drastically low all that we have to give for that patient is androgen or testosterone injections come to the complication of androgen insensitivity syndrome they will be infertile because they don't have uterus or the fallopian tube they have short or the well developed vagina and psychological issues and social issues will come because once uh, they are at puberty until that age they will be grown as one sex and after the puberty they appear like female or subsequently when they marry if they are born, born and brought up as female itself subsequently when they marry and uh, they come to know that they are infertile and they are not having uterus or vagina then there will be so many psychological and social stigma will be there with respect to this so counseling is required genetic counseling these undistended testes in these individuals are prone for testicular malignancies or carcinoma tumors so therefore it has to be diagnosed early and the testes has to be removed it's like a time bomb the testes inside the abdomen is like a time bomb so it will become carcinomatous at the earliest so we have to diagnose this condition earliest and we have to remove this testis even before it becomes cancerous or malignant so this is the what androgen insensitivity syndrome and last but not the least the treatment of that the testis that are growing just now i told you it has to be removed to prevent the testicular carcinoma which can happen if the testis is left inside the abdominal cavity okay and estrogen replacement is prescribed after puberty because the individual has to get estrogen replaced because too much of uh, androgen will be there in them but it is not functional so female secondary sexual characteristic will be there but it is not well developed so you have to give estrogen replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy as that of a female and uh, treatment and gender assignment is a very complex issue you have to do psychological uh, counseling and genetic counseling for that individual and based on their interest uh, we have to do that procedures with respect to the external genitalia and the psychological issues and karyotype karyotype cannot be changed but physical characteristic can be changed based on the suitability of the individual so it is complex and it has to be individualized like and share this video with your family and friends don't forget to press the thumbs up button thank you for learning from logic medico if you are new to our channel kindly consider subscribing I recommend this channel to your family and friends don't forget to press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos which I upload. Thank you once again for learning from Logic Medico.